All right, Shalom, Shalom, first and foremost, I would like to give all the honors and the praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Son's name is Yahweh Shai, and who I reverence and honors to the apostles that are in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. And I would like to say, Tawali Yahawa, Tawali Yahawa Yahabashai, Tawali Yahawa, Tawali Yahabai Shem Yahabashai, Tawali Yahawa, Tawali Yahabai Shem Yahabashai, for allowing me to minister unto the elect. This lesson is going to be very, very, very serious. Okay? It's going to be concerning demonic activity and witchcraft. Okay? And there's certain ways these things could happen. Now, I always say this they do the elects, do they deal with, do we deal with demonic attacks? Yes. But the difference is. The hopeful elect know how to combat that. The people of the world, they don't know how to. Right? We're going to start from Ephesians 6 and 11 because there's a lot of demonic activity. Right? Go to Ephesians 6 and we're going to go straight to verse 10. And we go over the scripture again and again and again and again and again. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord Shai and in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armour of Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So we know the wiles is his tricks, his schemes, his methods. That word for wiles is methodeia. So look, if you've broken certain sin patterns, he's going to try to look for an avenue by any means because it's wiles, tricks. So his only solution is to use these tricks and to see if it works. And tricks go into what? Magic. Right? What do witches use? Tricks. Sleight of hand. Okay? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. The highest form of spirits. And against powers and against rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's the battle. Right? Because someone could get, get on your nerves. You can punch them in the face. And once you punch them in the face, that person can heal up. And that spirit, that the individual that you punch in the face, the spirit, the individual, that spirit could leave them and jump on somebody else. So it's very tricky. Okay? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the most high, which you may be able to withstand in an evil day and having done all to stand. In more, the, the opposition, they're looking to disarm you, completely disarm you. Right? That's why you have to be wise. So now we're going to go into a little things on demonic activity because it says principalities and powers. So these same principalities and powers, where are they today? Hmm? They're on certain places of the earth. There's certain places of the earth that are more inclined to demonic activity. Right? Certain places because every city has an energy. Every town has an energy. Every town has some type of form of vibration. Okay. So we're going to go into it, Baba Kasha. In just a minute. There's a lot of witches and warlocks out there. You've got to guard, you've got to guard your spirit daily. There's a lot of negative energies out here. That's why you've got to also stay positive. You've got to stay in the spirit. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18 and jump straight to verse 9. And when thou come into the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do of the commandments of those nations, to do of the, of the abominations of those nations. What was, the, what was the abominations? Idols. Okay. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter, right, to pass through the fire 
And that's what they were doing. Offering their children to Malak. That's what they were doing. For fame. People do it today. Not just in the entertainment industry. Your everyday, your everyday citizen that you walk past, they're doing these same things to get fame, to get rich, because it thinks it they, they think it brings them wealth. Nor his daughter to pass through the fire or use the divination, right? Witchcraft or observer of times, right? Looking at the stars, looking at the moon, right? Or an enchanter. So the scripture was against, it was against observing of times, right? It was against that. Now, what's the moon? The moon is used for the weeks and so forth. But we're not supposed to be observing it like the ancient Mayans and the Aztecs. They were doing it for wickedness. Right? Or an enchanter. Right? Type in this word enchanter. See what comes up. Right? Enchanter. One who delights or fascinates or sorcerer or magician. One who enchants or practices enchantments or sorcery or magician. Simple as that. One, a conjurer. Right? Seduction. From the supernatural occult. Right? So even, yeah, one may say witches, they're spiritual, but they're summoning demons on the left-hand side. They're occultists. Okay? So it says, or a witch, or a charmer, <laughs> right? So the Lord forbids these things, but us to do these things. A charmer, disarmingly attractive person, right? And that's why a lot of the times these witches will come in a form of a very pretty, 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 pretty woman. That's that Jezebel spirit, right? They were coming at Jezebel spirit. And that's why you've got to be careful. If a beautiful woman is sent your way, right? She could be a witch, and it's always the beautiful ones, right? And it says, a disarmingly attractive person, one who casts spells, or an enchanter or a magician, one who charms, watch out for flattery, right? From magical powers, claiming to have magical powers. Right? So you've got to be careful because these witches, they're trying to cast spells on you. Right? And not just you. If they can't get to you, guess what they would do? They would cast spells on the ones that are closest to you. So you've got to be able to exercise them spirits on the right-hand side. Right? You're going to have to find it out some way, somehow. Right? Because if they can't get to you, they get to the people around you. Especially if they're not in the truth. Okay? And it says, Baba Kishar, or consulter, because you have people that consult with dead spirits, all right? With the dead, with family, familiar spirits. What's a familiar spirit? All right? Well, that gives it away. Familiar. So they will say something that's familiar to your life, and you will say, well, they must, they must be a prophet. Now, they're not prophets. They're just saying something that's familiar. They're in contact with what? The supernatural realm, but it's on the left-hand side. Satan's telling them what to do. Okay. Familiars was was um, known to have supernatural entities that they were talking to, and spiritual guardians that would protect and assist witches and cunning folklores and their picture with magic. Right. But guess what? These people they also use animals as well. Yeah, they use animals. And basically, it's really referring to demons. So that's what familiar spirits are. People that contact demons. Okay, and how do we know? Because when you go into the story of Sun, bear me just a minute. Quickly go to that Baba Kishar. The It talked about the witch of Indoor, right? Before we go into that, let's continue. Observer of times are onto diviners. Hold on just a minute. A wizard. Right, you have wizards out here, or a necromancer, they're those that contact the spirit of the dead. For all these things are abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord Jehovah shall that power doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect before the Lord Jehovah wa Yahweh Shai. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observer of times, 
and unto the violence. But as for thee, the Lord Jehovah, thy power, have not suffered thee to do so. So the other nations done that. The Lord thy power will raise up a prophet from the midst of thee and thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken. And that's why we have prophets within our nation. Right? Now you had Saul. And what did Saul do? We're going to go to it. Go to Saul. I believe it's 1 and 28. Let's see if we can find it. 1 and 28. See, there's examples in the scriptures what to do and what not to do. All right? Go to Psalms 1 and 28. That's why we can't be hasty in a time of tribulation. We can't be hasty in a time of tribulation. This is 1 Samuel 28. Right? And three. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar <coughs> spirits aforetime <coughs> and wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together, which we were warring with the Philistines at this time. Okay, and came and pitched in Shunam. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Galbia. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. So it says he was afraid. So that spirit of fear entered into him. The Holy Spirit basically left him. See, there's a godly fear we're supposed to have of Yahweh Shai. Right? And that's another way a demon can enter in. Right? And that's why these witches, they were used, tried to use trauma. Trauma, satanic ritual abuse. That's what they would try. Because if they can get you in that position, then they may have a chance of casting these spells and it's sticking to you. Okay. So it says, Sal, he feared. He trembled. He was afraid. Verse 6. And when Sal inquired of the Lord Jehovah, and the Lord Jehovah shall answer him not, neither by dreams nor by Urim. Right. The modern day Urim is what? The tablets, the phones. Right. And the Urim would be on what? Your, um, your garment. Right, nor by prophets, so we wouldn't get no more answer. Ren said, Sar unto his servant, Seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit, right? That I may go to her and inquire of her because the spirit left him. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that have a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, right. And went and two men with him. Okay. Just so he wouldn't be noticed. And they came to the woman by night. And he said I pray thee divine unto me. By the familiar spirit. And bring me him up. Whom I shall name unto thee. So this showed you the witches. And those that dealt with this particular thing. They were able to summon spirits of the dead. All right. And the woman said unto him, Behold, knowest thou what Saul have done? Not knowing this was Saul that was asking this to be done. And how he have cut off those that have familiar spirits. And that's why Saul, he hid his face. And the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swear to her by the Lord Jehovah, saying, As the Lord Jehovah shall live, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Sal Samuel. So this is what Saul wanted, right? To conjure up Samuel's spirit, right? And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, right? And the woman spake to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me for thou art son? And the king said unto her, be not afraid for thou sawest thou for what thou sawest thou. And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. So it was, it was in the form of different spirits. It wasn't actually Samuel. These were, um, these were spirits. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. He completely went off. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. So remember, he had the evil spirit of distress upon him. 
right? So this is why we've got to be careful what spirits are being attached to you or what spirits are people trying to attach to you and rebuke them spirits immediately. And the Mosai has departed from me. So the Mosai left him and he felt it. And answered me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called thee, that I may know, make known to, unto me what shall I do. When son, then said Samuel, Wherefore, when dost thou ask of me, saying, The Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? Right? So the Lord Jehovah became an enemy to Saul. That's why you have the house of Saul, and you have the house of David. Right? Excuse me, just a minute. I think that's my delivery. So lucky, so lucky about that. Okay. So where was we, where was we, where was we, where was we? When said Samuel, Wherefore then thou ask of me, saying the Lord is departed from thee, and it's become thy enemy. And the Lord have Yahweh have done to him as he spake by me, Samuel. For the Lord Yahweh shall have rent the kingdom out of thine hand. And given it unto thy neighbor, even to David. Because that obeyest not the voice of the, the Lord Jehovah, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. He was told to destroy Amalek and the cattle. He did not do that. Okay? He did not do that. He kept it. Right? He kept it. He kept all the livestock. He was told to destroy it all. Right? And the scripture says rebellion is, is as the sin of witchcraft. So when you're rebelling against Yahweh Shai, that's witchcraft. Okay. And it says, okay. The Lord is departed from me and become the enemy when to that Baba Kasha. And moreover, the Lord Yahweh Shai will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines tomorrow. And shall thou and their sons be with me. They're going to pass away. And the Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. When Saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was so afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him. For he had eaten no bread at all day nor night. And the woman came unto Saul and saw, saw that he was troubled. And said unto him, Behold, thy handmaid have obeyed the voice and have put my life in my hand. And hearken unto the words which thou spakest unto me. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thy handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before thee and eat, that thou mayest strength when thou goest on the way. And he refused, so he was distressed, and said, I will not eat, but his servants together with the woman compelled him, and he hearkened unto the voice, so he arose from the earth and sat up on the bed. And the woman had a fat calf in the house, and she hasted and killed it, took flour, kneaded it, did bake unleavened bread thereof, and she brought it unto Saul. And before his servants, and they did eat, and they rose up and went away that night. So you have the example, excuse me, of Saul, right? You have the example of Saul, right? Consulting the witch of Endor. So yes, witches, they can summon people and spirits from the dead. But it's on the left hand side. These are unclean spirits. It's not a righteous thing. Because previously, when Saul was in power, he got rid of them. And the same man that got rid of him, he was seeking them. So it was an act of desperation. And that's why we cannot be hasty when things go wrong. We have to rely on your Hawashai. And be careful what energies, what people you're communicating with. Be careful what people, if people are giving you gifts, you don't just take the gift. They could have done anything with that gift. Okay? And there's definitely ways we can combat this, right? And also, when you go into Acts 16 and 16, we're going to go into that as well. Baba Kasha, all right? Go, going to go into Acts 16 and 16 as well. Right? Before we go into that, I just want to quickly get this out. So the things that can lead to you being someone being demonically possessed and signs and how to able to notice. What's one of the easy way to notice if someone's demonically possessed? The first one, right? Someone 
That's just screaming. You only scream when you're scared. Right? It's just an outrageous scream. Right? Sometimes it sounds like a sexual scream. So if someone's just screaming out of nowhere, that's a spirit. That's a spirit. Right? Someone's just shouting, that's a, that's a spirit. These are demonic spirits that attach to people. You ever heard, heard someone just screaming in the distance? Well, that's a spirit. And they done the same thing. They cried out when they heard you have Excuse me, just a minute. One, just, I just want to get this quickly. No, it's not there. Hold on just a minute. Because remember, them evil spirits knew who Yahawashai was. Right? Go to Luke 4 and 41. Go to Luke 4 and 41. So this is Luke, yep, yeah, go to Luke 4 and 40, go to 35, right, right, there's a lot of me, actually go to Luke 4 and 33, right, and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and he cried out with a loud voice, so if someone's crying out with a loud voice, that would be, that wouldn't it seem unusual? There has to be a reason why you're crying out with a loud voice. Now, we can understand if you've lost a loved one or something, but some of us crying out for no reason. Right? Saying, let us alone. Right? Let us alone. And we need to go into these words as well. I want to see what this means in the blue letter. Get into these words. Let us alone. And you know what? Let us alone. In other words, let us be. Because right? them spirits that dwell in people, they don't want to leave. They're very stubborn. See what this means. Let us alone. See what comes up. Okay. It's an interjection of um, expressive of, of indignation. Or of a wonder mixed with fear. <laughs> it's a, of a wonder mixed with fear. And at the end of it, it says, ha, huh, uh. It says, ha, huh, uh. Right? Read that again. Interjection. Go into this word, interjection. And that's why it's so important to look up your words as well. Baba Kashar interjection. Excuse me just a minute. Mixed with fear. Instinctive sounds. Baba Kashar. You've got to get into these words. Interjection. Interjection. Ejectory utterance. Usually lacking grammatical connection. A sudden short utterance. A part of speech that usually expresses emotion is capable of standing alone. Um, of any words belonging to this part of speech, such as ah, uh, wow, all right, emotion. Okay, so it's an interjection. All right, so we went to that. Let's get back to where we was, all right? Mix with fear. So this is why I keep saying, the main thing, as someone that's possessed with the Holy Spirit now, right? When you come around other people, they're going to give a false facade, like they're not really scared, but they are. Really, they're in deep fear. Because the scripture says in James, what, 2? 
even the demons fear and tremble. Right? So the thing they can only do, the, the three, two or three things they can do is interject and try to cast that fear upon you. Right? Because they're fearless. They're, so like a day fear. <laughs> okay? Because it says expressive indignation. Because them demons don't want to leave. Right? They're happy in people's vessels. Okay? It says, aha, let alone. So they don't want to go. They want to stay in these vessels. So now let's get back to the scripture, Baba Kasha. Thing just froze up. So lucky. Let's get back to the scriptures. So we back, where was we? Luke 4. Right? Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Okay. They have everything to do with Yahweh Shai. Because he formed them. He created them wicked, evil spirits. Them demons. Okay, so they were trying to be smart. Remember, demons are, are they intelligent? Yeah, they're intelligent beings, right? And that's why when you corner, when you corner these demons, they act very erratic, right? I know thee, right? Who art thou? Okay, the Holy One of the Most High. So they know you have a shy. I'm moving too fast, right? Check this out. Thou Yahavashah Yahav of Nazareth, are they come to destroy us? So they knew who Yahavashah was. And why did they ask, have they come to destroy us? Because Yahavashah is the father of spirits. Right? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of the Most High. That's why they have to rush in with them fair demons. They have to rush you in with them fair demons. That's why they have to rush in packs, because it's, it's legion. <laughs> right? And that's what's going on today. And Yahweh rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. In other words, be quiet and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and he hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For what? With authority. So this is what I keep saying. You can't be walking around here with your head down. You have the authority. Right? But now if you walk around here all scared and timid, then demons are going to have a field day. <laughs> the demons are going to have a field day with you. You have the authority. Sometimes I don't, I don't think you realise what authority you have. Because they know what for authority you have. That's why they have to, that's, that's why they have to gang up in, in legions. Okay, with a word and what is this for? With authority and power, command if the unclean spirits and they come out, right? So this is how you deal with spirits and manif demonic manifestations, right? Because you don't know, someone may have done a bit of spell work. Well, if you have the Holy Spirit, you should be able to exercise a home, right? And it's important. You can pray over your home. You can exercise unclean spirits out of your household. You can do that. You can bless your household. Put some oil up. You got frankincense. You got oil. Right? Put blessings upon your household. Put nothing wrong with it. You can even pray for your family as well. Right? Do these things. Okay? You have to guard your temple. Your our temple is our mind. And also your household. Right? Because you've got people trying to project their negativity upon you. Which is, which is witchcraft. These dark, wicked spirits that have attached to these people. I call them entities. That's what they are. They're entities. Right? And they're void of the light. Alright? So this is Luke 4. Where was we? Where was we? Where was we? And... 37, and the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about, right? So we're not looking for fame, but it's like, if you're of the elect, you are fa you are somewhat famous if you're of the elect. And sometimes that's why you would get people following you, because some people are just in awe. They want to know more. Okay. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house, and Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. 
A fever is a fluctuation, hot and cold. All right? So that fever that Simon's mother had, what was it? It was a spirit. So even this even established the sicknesses we have as well, that's a spirit. Okay? So if you have fluctuations, that's a spirit. That's attacking your flesh. And they were sorting for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. And immediately she, she arose and ministered unto him. Now when the sun was all setting, all that they had any sick with device, diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on, up, on, upon every one of them and healed them. And the devils also came out of many crying out. So another side of demonic possession is like a crying, it's like a wailing. Right? It's a particular sound. Right? And saying, Thou art Mashiach, the son of the Most High. So these spirits are being subject to Yahweh Shai. It's not the other way around. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak. For they knew that he was Mashiach. So the spirits know Yahweh Shai. So they so if they know Yahweh Shai, you're telling me they don't know who you are. They know you. If you have his spirit. Right? But their whole thing is to, because they know they have a short time, their whole thing is to bring in that intimidation demon. Don't fall for the trick. Don't fall for it. Right? So we went to that. And again, what are some of the tricks that they use? Beware of such wiles as false guilt. Yeah, the devil's going to use false guilt. Your sins. Remember, he's going to use anything he can. All right? What else is he going to use? Condem he's going to use guilt, your sins of the past, to what? To bring condemnation. All right? And that's able, with doing that, if you're not strong, that's able to drain you. Because then you're going to be worried about what everybody else thinks. All right? These spirits, they love um, abandonment. Yes, they act off that. Abandonment. If they think you're abandoned, they're going to they're gonna come. Right? And how could, how do you know that? Go into Peter's. Go into Peter's. They love abandonment. They love that. They love isolation. Right? Or to think that you're isolated. Right? Sa Satan ain't got no power over here, bro. I don't know what they told you, but Satan doesn't have no power over here. Right? This is 1 Peter's 5 and 5. Be sober, be vigilant, right? Look around, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So a lion, we know when a lion hunts, the lion goes for the weakest prey, or a prey that may have some type of disability. That's who they go for, because it's an easy catch. So that's why the demons love isolation. They try to get you by yourself when you're by yourself. That's what they try, right? And they love insecurity. So if you're insecure, the demons can work upon them insecurities. They can attack them, right? So if you have these doubts, oh, maybe I'm not a man of the Lord's Well, the devil's going to say, yeah, maybe you're not. <laughs> okay, maybe you're not. Okay. Intimidation. And we just basically went into the example of Yahweh Shai, you know, when they were going, aha, aha, you know, when they were making them noises. But they had to be in subjection to Yahweh Shai and his authority. So yeah, they're gonna they're gonna come to you, they're gonna come to you with the, the little intimidation, but really they fear you. Right? They try intimidation because with intimidation, they can try to install fear. Oh, and devil, don't he love fear? Right? He wants you to fear him. No, you're not supposed to fear the devil. You fear demons. No, you're supposed to fear Yahweh Shai that controls the demons. Okay? And what else do they use as well? Harassment. That's a big one. Harassment they use as well. Right? Remember, their whole thing is to, um, to demonize. And when you demonize someone, what are you doing? You're trying to put a dark vibration upon them. This is all witchcraft. These are all signs of witchcraft. When you're demonizing someone, when you're slandering someone, and he's known as the accuser of our brethren. So when you do these things, you're trying to put a dark 
energy upon this particular individual. Fear, anxiety, worry. What else? What else? What else? Um, what can you do? Well, use the scriptures. Okay. And signs that you may have a manifestation of spirits is straight away. Get rid of all negative energies. Anything you may have, any objects, get rid of that. Right? If you're burning this sage, you stop doing that. If you've got any, I don't know, pentagrams or get rid of that. If you've got any sorcery books, get rid of that. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? You may be eating pork. Well, stop, stop cooking pork because you're inviting these spirits into your household and into your vessel. Right? There's many different ways you, you can invite and you can open up doors. Right? And we don't want to open up doors. We want to close as many doors as possible. As many. Okay? We don't want these negative energies. We want these good energies. Right? That, that Holy Spirit. And that's a, another thing. Yeah, try and... I listen to rap music now and then. If you can... Try and mix it up. Listen to some jazz. Listen to some classical music. Right? Because music also helps as well. Right? You want to eliminate all access to the demons. Demons use negative music. Demons can also enter in by that way as well. If someone's always angry. You notice people that are angry all the time. Demons jump on them. So protect your energy. Protect your spirit. Okay? And do things as well. That's another lesson I wanted to go into. Do things that uplift your spirit, right? You don't want to be doing things that, that don't uplift your spirit, okay? Which build up your spirit. What else? Um, signs of demonic presence is flickering lights and flickering electronics. That's another sign that you may have some form of manifestation, right? So you want to stop it straight away, okay? Whispers, if you're hearing whispers, that's another form of what somebody doing witchcraft. What else? What else? Moaning, right? Like it's like a moaning groan. Um, if you have a woman, right? If you have a woman and this woman, her voice sounds deep like a man's voice, but I ain't usually like that. She's demon possessed. If you have a man that his voice is usually deep, but his voice sounds like a woman's voice, that's demonic possession. Right, there's so many different forms, so many different forms. If you see someone's eyes and the pupils of their eyes are very small, that's the demons in someone's eyes. You see someone's face and the the form of their face like changes, it goes wrinkly. That's a demonic possession. Right, there's so many, there's so many different um forms, so many different forms. Okay. If things are dropping off the ceiling, that's demonic possession. That's a manifestation. Okay? You've got to deal with these things straight away. Right? And call that spirit out. Um, electronic interference. So you're having a lot of electronic interference. Some call it electromagnetic fields. But what's electronic man man magnetic fields? That's nothing but demons. Excuse me just a minute. And we can prove that. Excuse me just a minute. Because the demons also control the, what, the airwaves as well. Okay. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Well, when time passed, you walked. Right? Of the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air. So a lot of the time we talk about other military, are they using technology? Yes, but everything is spiritual. These are demons, the prince of power of the air. Alright? So even within yeah, the airwaves and the radio and technology, the devil also has power over rap. Okay. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay, remember Satan is called the prince because he is the ruler of possessors of power to manifest evil in the world through influencing people and commanding demons, right? 
in this realm. Okay, so he's able to do that. Okay, so now we would see there's a scripture for everything. Right, I know whether this is edifying and basically cleanse your house, right, which I'm going to, going to every single day now, there's going to be a cleanse of this house. Cleanse your house and body regularly, right? And they say cleansiness is as close to what godliness. So you can cleanse your household, right? Anoint your household, right? You know the Hebrew, right? Apply that Hebrew, apply these prayers, right? He told these evil spirits, get out. Right? I see you there. Remove yourself in the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Right? You have to combat these spirits. You can't just let them run run havoc. Because if you let them run havoc, it's just going to get worse. There's many ways these things could happen. Right? And another major way, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything as well. Another way they can enter in is through a covenant and most of the time this is how this happens through a covenant that you may not know of that your family may have made with demons because your family you may have family members that are part of what fraternities so when you're a part of a fraternity what are you giving yourself to basically you're giving yourself to satan and that's all fraternities are right you give yourself over to this particular fraternity, which that fraternity belongs to the God of this world, which is Satan. And because you give yourself to that fraternity, you have certain, certain powers you have, you possess. So the demons actually take control of people. Most of these masons. They're not in control of their own vessel, basically. Right? Demons control them. Which now we... The hopeful elect will control what inspired by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they're not controlled by the Holy Spirit. They're controlled by demons. The demons tell them what to do. The demons give them their next move. And when they fail, they get punished. Okay? So that's another way. You may you may be thinking, well, why is why so much? Why is it every time I level up or anything happens, there's like a demon trying to hold me back? Because... You might have someone within your family that made an agreement with particular spirits or an idol. Okay. And what do they call it? Generational curses. All right. And what's an example of that? Let's go to Isaiah 28 right, and 18. Isaiah 28 and 18. Go straight to verse 15. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death. So there's certain people within your family. They made a covenant with the enemy, death. All right? You may look at some family pictures and you hold on a minute. Have you ever looked at some photos and it's like, hold on. You're looking at these photos and it's like, you can, send, you can see a demonic presence behind this individual. In other, on them or behind them. That's a spirit. Because whether you not whether you know it or not, some generations down the line, you may have had someone that was into ancestor worship or whatever. Right? Yeah, I'm talking about someone in your family. And they pass it down and they pass it down and they pass it down. That's another form of gang stalking. And them same spirits, they want to get you in line. Right? Isaiah 28. And 15, because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell, and we are to the agreement. These are to people that sell out when the overflow, overflowing score shall pass through, which is going to be the destruction, it shall not come unto us. We, we have made lies our refuge. In other words, a lot of people sell out and they get hypnotized to believe a lie. Right? Because that's what you do when you sell out. When you sell out, you keep your mouth shut. You believe in a lie. You consent to a lie. Right? And under falsehoods have we hid ourselves. So people hide themselves under falsehoods. Right? Therefore thou saith the Lord, you have a shy power. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. And he that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the lion of righteousness, to the plummet, and hell sweep away the refuge of lies. And the water shall overflow the hiding place. 
and your covenant with death, with these idols, shall be disannulled. Your, your, your covenant is going to be cancelled. Their demons are going to leave you. Right? And your agreement with hell shall not stand. Right? They were just using you. And even your even these gang stalkers, the masons, your bro, Satan was just using you. All that's gonna fall. <laughs> and these people are gonna turn on each other. When the overflowing score shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. So you're gonna be trodden down when that scourge comes through. You're gonna be trodden down by it. You're not gonna be looked after. You're gonna be trodden down by that same scourge because you made a covenant with the enemy. Right? So if you made a covenant with the enemy, then you're not in you're not in line with the covenant of Yahabashai. And that's why the covenant, I try to speak about it as much as possible. The covenant that the elect are in with Yahabashai. And what's a covenant? A covenant is an agreement. And that's why it's so important that we confess Yahabashai. Okay. Baba Kasha. Whoever shall confess that Yahushua is Mashiach. Go to John 3. Actually, Matthews as well. Okay. Go to John 3. Yeah, the elect are in the covenant with Yahushua. Because they've always been with Yahushua. John 3. He that believe on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So that's why the belief is so important. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High. Right? So the elect were going to believe. Therefore, they're not condemned. Romans 8. There's, therefore, there's no condemnation to those that have in Yahawashai. Because they're in a covenant. They're in agreement with Yahawashai. They believe in Yahawashai. What's the covenant? Believing that Yahawashai died for your sins. Believing that his blood covered you. That's the covenant. You still got people saying, oh, we're waiting for the, co the new covenant. It said it was done in, what's it, Colossians? When he was on the cross, it was done. He said, it is done. That's when it came into power. And that's why it's so important to mention the new covenant. Right? How we're about we're waiting? Right? We're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not waiting. The covenant is the agreement. That those that were in what? Lying with Yahawashai. And that believe in what? He died for your sins. That's that contract. That's that covenant. Okay. So with this, let <laughs> me just a minute. I hope this. I hope this was edifying. I hope this was edifying. And this is some of the ways. This is how you know about the demons, the spiritual realm, and how to battle it. You got to keep your energy pure. And yeah, if you're around, example, if you're around negative people, you just you you keep them at bay. You know, you keep them at bay. And you do things to keep your spirit uplifted, which the next lesson I'll definitely want to go into that as well. Right? Do things to keep your spirit uplifted. And Lord willing, this was edifying. If you have any demonic infestations where you pray to the name of Yahweh, by Sham, Yahweh Shai, learn that Hebrew. And it doesn't need to be because I don't know I don't know Hebrew fluently, but I know a bit of Hebrew. So here's a Hebrew prayer, right? Kaba ha ayabya, right? Kaba means quench, ha means da, ayabya means enemy. So Yahweh Shai, the name really we should say Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. The name of Yahweh is the Father. The name of the Son is Yahweh Shai. In the name of Yahweh Shai, Kaba ha ayabya, Kaba ha ayabya. So we pray for what Yahweh Shai to quench the enemy. The adversary. And with you doing that, you've got to believe in your prayers. Alright, it might not happen straight away, but he's going to do it. This thing is about faith. Okay. So with this, I really hope I brought out the main point so you were edified. And until the next one, shadow on to the hopeful elect across the globe. Shadow on.